Hello everybody and good evening. So I'm coming at you with a little evening plant care, relaxing, cozy vibes. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling kind of depressed and kind of sad and anxious. No particular reason, just just kind of the vibe that I'm feeling. And I decided the best cure for my depression would be to actually take care of my lovely, lovely plants. Whenever I do get in these depressive episodes, I oftentimes neglect my plants, which is not good for them. And it's obviously also not good for me because if my plants aren't looking cute and they're suffering, then that means that I'm also suffering even more. So I'm just going to take probably a couple of minutes, not a lot, maybe half an hour to an hour max, just to kind of look at everybody, water who needs to be watered, appreciate them, and also just talk about talk about how plant care affects my mood and how it can actually get me out of a certain depressive episode. So if that sounds good to you, please grab yourself a cozy little beverage and a little snack, maybe some plant care tasks of your own, and let's get to it. First things first, I'm going to make myself a delicious little tea because I'm feeling in the tea mood since it's fall and the days are shorter and cooler. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a little tea. Alrighty, I got my watering can and I got my lovely little tea. I'm drinking a nice evening chamomile tea. Love chamomile tea, it's one of my favorite. I also have some fertilizer water and I'm just gonna go around, check whoever needs water and top them up. I usually water all my plants in the sink and I never water them stationary. So this is kind of a nice change of pace and I have this, uh, this handy little shelf that is going to be useful as a watering station placement thingy. But yeah, let's start. And maybe we should start with this girl because she has been, oh, Jesus Christ, she has been catching my eye lately. This is my Inferium Clarinervium. And she is working on a new leaf that looks absolutely gorgeous. So I really like her. She did have a very ongoing battle with thrips, but luckily I think we did manage to resolve that. But yeah, she definitely needs some water, especially since she is pushing out that gorgeous new leaf. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill her up a little bit. Since I'm watering in place, I'm just I'm not, I'm being very conscious whenever I water plants in stationary or in their cover pots, I'm being very, very conscious to not overwater my plants because it's very easy to overwater your plants if they are not properly drained. So I just make sure to water them and leave just the tiniest, tiniest little amount of water in the actual cover pot and then the plants will drink that up as they need it. But yeah. I really just was feeling so down these past few days and it comes out of nowhere randomly and I'm not completely sure why. I mean, there are things in my life that I am a little bit dissatisfied with, mainly work related, but honestly, I I have been I have been getting better at trying to not stress about work because at the end of the day it is just work. And if something doesn't get done or something is not, I don't know, I'm very harsh on myself and I expect a very high level of standard of myself, which is great because that means that I'm a great employee. However, it can sometimes also bite me in the ass because I am just unnecessary, unnecessarily hard on myself. So that's been one thing that's been going on. Another thing that I think is making me go a little bit crazy is I did start Accutane about two weeks ago and I started because I had very, very bad cystic acne 
on my forehead and it was just it was just a mess so I really needed to get that treated and we basically decided to go with Accutane because nothing else worked no diet changes no no like external um therapies worked so the only thing that was left as an option basically was Accutane and Accutane for those of you who do not know is a pretty hardcore uh, drug that helps with acne so but yeah it has a bunch of side effects and one of them is that it can make you a little bit depresso a little bit depresso espresso so I do feel like that might have been or that might have something to do with it but I don't know. I really don't know. Also, I noticed that some of my moss poles are quite dry. So I'm going to top those up as well. But she might start dripping. This was probably a bad idea. But this is my stunning Marble Queen Puffos. And I am uh, climbing her or growing her, that's the word. I'm growing her up this moss pole because these look just so, so freaking stunning when they are big and mature. I love a puffos on a moss pole. I think they are such stunning, stunning plants because usually puffos are, you know, they're, they're the basic common beginner plant. Nobody really cares about puffoses, but I'm telling you, when they're grown on a moss pole, they look delectable. I have a Minjula Pothos actually growing on a moss pole as well. And she is literally the apple of my eye. Such a stunning plant. Oh God, this one, it's my little Tordum. And I have her in semi-hydro. Also, how cute is this cover pot? I freaking love this cover pot. But yeah, my Tordum, we, <laughs> she does not like me. I had... I had a more mature version of the Tordum. That one rotted completely. Then I got a little baby and that one also rotted and I literally managed to save it by just the, the little chunk or the stem inside is literally this big. It is minuscule, but yeah, she's kind of like not doing much for me. I did put her in semi-hydro recently just to maybe hopefully encourage her to do some something good for me for once because she has not been doing good things for me at all and i'm not and i'm not happy about that also this video will be kind of jumbly and i will be going um going all over the place so i am sorry but i don't know i just want this to be a very relaxed chatty kind of video oh uh, but yeah back to back to what i was saying i do think that accutane might have might have something to do with this depressive episode right now, but also I am very prone to having depressive episodes. It's nothing new for me. I'm, I've been struggling with depression and anxiety ever since my teens. And you know what? It was, it's just, an, it's an ongoing battle. You can never get rid of that stuff. No matter how many, no matter how much therapy you do or what kind of medication you're on it's just a constant constant struggle and there's always going to be days where it's better and days where it's worse and i did i did kind of manage to get to a point where i'm pretty good and i know my triggers i know what i need to do when i'm feeling down and i think i pretty much have a good grasp on how to manage it but man, sometimes, sometimes it just hits you out of the blue and all you can do is freaking cry. And it is just so disheartening because you do all of this work and you feel so amazing when, you, when you're in that high place and then it just all comes crashing down so fast because I was actually feeling really great these past, of, uh, past couple of days, past couple of weeks even. I was really productive, I was feeling great, I was, you know, just enjoying life and then all of a sudden it's just back to being sad, depressed and literally incapable of doing anything. But yeah, also look at her, she's pushing out some new roots, I'm so, I love this plant. It is a slow ass grower and she likes to run, this is my Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight, but these plants are so gorgeous, but they can be a little bit finicky. 
But yeah, basically I am just, I have just been feeling down lately. And honestly, doing plant care, doing these little chores where I can just go around and kind of play with my plants and touch them and look at them and, you know, notice new leaves, notice, notice new, uh, new root growth. It is always such a rewarding time and opportunity for me because I can reflect and be very grateful for the things I do because, you know, keeping and caring for all of these houseplants, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job at all, but I love it and I enjoy it. It brings me so much freaking joy. And it's just something that I sometimes take for granted because, because I get in these spaces where I, where I don't feel great about myself. And honestly, plants just help me so, so much. Plant care and just, plant care has taught me so much over the years. It has taught me how to be patient because you can't, like plants don't grow uh, overnight, which would be lovely. But honestly, a part of the charm of this hobby is that things take time and you won't see progress immediately. And you do have to put a pretty significant amount of hours and effort into this hobby in order to even get a reward. And sometimes there really even isn't a reward. I have plants that are horrible to me, horrible. <laughs> but I still have a lot of plants that I love. And even those that are challenging can be fun because it's fun to figure out how to, how to make their how to like, it's fun trying to figure out plants and once you do figure them out and know how they're ticking, it's such a satisfying, satisfying thing. I need to fill up my water can. I'll be right back. And we are back. Another reason why I really enjoy this hobby it's just because it allows me to slow down. Like I said, plants don't grow overnight. And I think in, in our society today where everything is so fast paced, it's so fast paced. You always gotta be thinking about what you're gonna do next, where you're gonna, what's, you're gonna, what's your next success gonna be? What's your next goal gonna be? It's always just go, go, go. You never really get the time to slow down, enjoy life, enjoy just nature. And plants have definitely, definitely taught me to enjoy nature more and enjoy my slow downtime as well as the fast-paced lifestyle. Sometimes I do like the fast-paced lifestyle. Sometimes I thrive on getting stuff done and being productive. But honestly, sometimes I do need, I do need that downtime. I need to slow down. And I think that's something we all need. We all need to just sometimes slow down and appreciate what we have in our lives, appreciate the present moment because we cannot, we cannot change the past. This is something I always say to myself. We cannot change the past and we cannot affect the future or predict the future. Oh Jesus, these, these plants are totally entangled. The only thing we can really do is affect the present and live in the moment. And right now I could be, I mean, Obviously, I'm still feeling depressed, and if you're feeling very depressed, you should seek help. I am at a place where I can kind of self-diagnose myself. I don't want to say that because that's kind of not, <laughs> it's not helpful. But basically, I know, I know when things are horribly bad to the point where I actually need to seek help, and I know when things are manageable for me. Right now, things are manageable for me. There are definitely times and situations where I can't get out of bed to do my plant care, and that is fine. In that situation, obviously, plant care is not important. But in days like these where I do feel down, but I'm not like crippling, cripple, cripplingly depressed, I do like to take care of my plants because it does allow me to be grateful and take a moment to be with nature and appreciate nature for what it is. And honestly, looking at plants, 
that's another thing. Man, they are, first of all, they're so versatile, just like humans. No plant, no two plants are the same. Even if they're the same freaking species, even if they're the same, even if they're from the same freaking mother plant, they're so different. And they all have their little quirks. They all have their little positives. They all have their little negatives. And none of them, none of them are perfect. And that is something that I struggle with a lot because thought I was gonna drop my can because I am a perfectionist at heart. I am an artist. It's just, it's just the way my brain is wired. Mm. And I always, I always expect the best for me and for myself. And I always want to be perfect and want to, you know, be the best at everything, but that is not possible. I am far from perfect and this also, of course, comes with age, but plants have definitely showed me that it is okay to not be perfect. You can still have blemishes and marks and scars and be beautiful because these plants, even for example, this little leaf, yes, it's kind of damaged, but overall the plant in itself is still beautiful. And even if it lost all of its leaves, even if it completely died back, it still would have a chance to actually grow back and be luscious and beautiful again. Also, I do have to show you this plant because she is stunning. Oh God, <laughs> this is, see, I love having a crowded plant shelf. I'm very much a uh, crowded kind of person or like, I love crowded spaces. That's why, or like crowded, what is it called? Rooms, like design. I do like a bit of a maximalism design, not so much of a minimalism, but yeah. This plant, she is gorgeous. It is my dragon scale alocasia. She is so freaking bushy. And these leaves, man, I love these leaves. They are so, oh, let me show you this one. They are so beautiful and dark and, oh, just such a lovely, lovely plant. Also grows like a weed, requires very, very little of me. And those are my favorite plants. The ones that look beautiful, require very little of me and also grow well. Alrighty, let's see. We do have some plants down here. I don't know. This is one of my newer plants. It's a Hoya Polynera Splash. I just recently added this to my collection and I can tell that she is dry. So she will get some water. But yeah, just <laughs> looking at the plants, watering them, taking care of them. It is so therapeutic for me and really taking the time to appreciate them, slow down. It's wonderful. Also, I do, I am sorry if I'm kind of maybe repetitive or if you know, at times I stumble over my words. English is not my first language. In fact, it's my third one, I guess, because I did obviously my mother language is my first language, but I learned German when I was a little child and can't speak German for crap right now. Okay, so I, I was very fluent in German when I was a kid, but then I kind of grew out of it. I started to love English more and now I, basically can't speak German at all. But yeah, so that's the reason if I sometimes stumble over my words or don't know what to say, or maybe sound a little bit repetitive, not my first language. Plus this is very off the cuff. I am not scripting any, any of this. And I just wanna, I just, I just wanna talk, have a nice little time. And also I wanna encourage you to share your experiences. How has plant care helped you? or if it has helped you even, maybe it hasn't. Maybe plant care was horrible for you. I would definitely like to hear that as well, but chances are if you're watching plant care videos, you probably love plants and you probably find them pretty freaking amazing. So I would really love to hear your opinions. And if you're struggling with anxiety or depression or anything else, I do feel like a lot of people today, especially in the plant community, I feel like a lot of plant parents do seek that escape into nature and do do kind of come to the point where where they are maybe a little bit sad and this hobby lifts them up at least that's how i feel when i watch other people who love plants anyways another skin dapsis true bi but this time it's the nearly black and oh my god i love black plants 
They are just stunning. And this one is just starting to trail. She's so freaking bushy. I absolutely love her. Also, I have her in this stunning little orange um, pot. And I do really think that she stands out in that little pot. So we're gonna give her some water. I don't know if I mentioned, but I am using uh, weak, weak diluted fertilizer water. I'm using the GT Foliage Focus. It's a fertilizer that I recently actually got and I am testing it out and seeing how it will do for me. I do hope it will do well because I did hear a lot of great things about, about that fertilizer. Okay, um, am I missing somebody? I always miss a plant. I always miss a plant. Whenever I water, I always forget somebody and then I'm like, oh God, I forgot to water you. <laughs> but hopefully I'm not missing anybody. My Croniana, I recently, this is my Croniana. Can you even see her? You probably can't even see her. <laughs> Alrighty, this is my Hoya Croniana Super Silver or Eskimo or whatever you want to call her. I recently moved her up here and I don't know if she's liking it. She has been looking a little bit shriveled and got some yellowing leaves, even though she did, she was recently watered, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a, this is a very, very resilient Hoya. I got it as a very small plant and she grew into a beast, so I'm sure she will be fine. But I will maybe change up her, her position because I do have a grow light up here but it's not the brightest spot or the brightest grow light. But another plant I really want to show you guys is my favorite, my favorite, my favorite Hoya. It's my Hoya Linearis. She's so gorgeous and I love her because she looks like freaking hair and it's just, I can toss my hair back and forth. It's fabulous. I just, oh, I love this plant. And I do hope she blooms for me. She is a winter bloomer. She always has peduncles, but she never freaking blooms. And it makes me upset because I really would love her to bloom. I love Hoya blooms. I'm recently getting very, very obsessed with Hoyas. And that's a weird thing because when I started this plant journey, I did not like Hoyas at all. They were kind of they were such a boring plant to me. They were very much a filler plant that does nothing because they do grow slow as heck. Well, some of them. Some of them grow pretty good, especially I, Hoyas are very light dependent. If you give them a lot of sun, they will bloom and grow like heckin' crazy. But if you do put them in a lower light situation, they definitely can live in a lower light situation, which is great. For example, I don't know if you can see her, but over here I have my Hoya Australis. Literally zero light. Let's not kid ourselves. This is not low light. This is zero light. And I am neglecting this plant. I'm not freaking touching this plant. I'm not watering her. I'm not gonna water her right now. I'm not, I'm not. She, she can fend for herself. She can freaking fend for herself. But she just, she just keeps on keeping. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's not my favorite Hoya. I don't care for it, but it just, I, 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 I like, I don't wanna get rid of it because she clearly wants to live. So I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I do water her sometimes, but not a lot. But speaking of Hoya Australis, there is actually a Hoya Australis that I love, which is my Hoya Australis Lisa. This plant is just stunning. I love the variegation. And when the new leaves come in, they are this gorgeous, gorgeous reddish color. Just beautiful. She lives over here next to my east south east slash south facing window because it does get light to like 1 p.m so i guess it's not technically a fully east window but i love that plant i love that plant so much but yeah i think we're pretty much done with the shelf i don't think i have anybody else who is in desperate need of watering and i think i am also done with this video maybe. I did have a lot of fun chatting and again I do hope you maybe took something or maybe you're gonna get something out of it at least if nothing else at least some background noise. I hope it was at least somewhat entertaining or somewhat insightful or whatnot and like I said definitely share your opinions on this topic and if Plant Care has helped you with any kind of issues in your life because I do feel like it has helped me tremendously throughout any hard time. And even right now, I was feeling so bad before filming this 
and I feel, I don't feel amazing, but I feel better. I feel better. I got to play around with my plants a little bit. And that is just such, that is always such a rewarding, rewarding time. And I appreciate the time that I can spend with them. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, another kind reminder to take it slow, take deep, deep breaths, just in and out. And remember that everything will be fine. I love you. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for keeping me company. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.